Welcome everybody to Extreme Off-Road Silly Builds and today we're dealing with a 2017 Nissan GT-R. Now this has 983 horsepower, 772 pounds-feet of torque from a 4.1 litre twin turbocharged V6 engine and the car itself now weighs 3,069 pounds. Came with all-wheel drive as standard but now has off-road tyres and off-road suspension and the vehicle itself now can now do 0 to 16 in 2.214 seconds to 100 in 4.252 seconds and going to a top speed of 213 miles an hour. So this is actually our first Nissan on this game so I thought I may as well go with the uh, legendary uh, GTR to uh, start off Nissan's uh, run on this uh, series. And uh, yeah, plenty of power, all-wheel driver standard and doesn't weigh all that much so it should do well here. So let's see what it can do. So yeah, this is a standard engine still in this car. Can't actually swap any engine in this vehicle. But still, nearly a thousand horsepower is not bad. Plus, because it does have oil drive and it did have nearly 600 horsepower originally anyway, it's uh, not dealing with all that much extra over what it had originally. But obviously we are dealing with off-road elements and uh, off-road tyres and rally suspension and uh, yeah, all the bumps and jumps that come with it. So. It's not completely in its own comfort zone, but it's more so than some of the vehicles on this series. So it should, in terms of handling, be okay. It's all about whether or not it can use all of that power. After all, there's not much point uh, having it all if you're just going to spin it away and lose time. It becomes more controllable as we go through the gears, which is to be expected. And really good high rate of speed there. A little bit on the raggedy edge though. drift around like a lot of Japanese cars like to, which is no surprise, especially with all this power and these loose surfaces that are on. Really solid top speed there at the end at 168 miles an hour. And we've got a time of 2 minutes 6 seconds point four two zero. So not quite as quick as the Mazda RX-8 from the previous episode. Which is a kind of a surprise because this does have more power and all-wheel drive as standard. But then again it was struggling for traction in areas. But nonetheless it has non managed to beat the likes of the Lancia Stratos, Ford Escort RS-1600, Lancia Fulvia, Ram 2500 Power Wagon, Renault 5 Turbo, Volkswagen Touareg and the Porsche Cayenne Turbo. So it's faster than a few uh, classic rally cars there, which is a surprise. But it is actually slightly slower than a 2017 Mercedes-Benz E350D, which, when you consider that's a rather large car with not much that power in the stock version, uh, was hardly a, a lightweight either. So, yeah, a bit of surprise behind that, as well as an Hillman Imp. Renault Sport Clio and a Renault Clio RS197. So, yeah, a little bit uh, middling in terms of some cars that it's slower than, but it is uh, quicker than some classic rally cars, quicker than several SUVs. So, yeah, it's not an entire disappointment, but considering, you know, it had all-wheel drive as standard and, uh, yeah, we're not dealing with a massive amount of extra horsepower, I was expecting a bit better, but it really just did struggle to put its power down at times and was a little bit unpredictable in terms of what it, what it was going to do. And uh, yeah, because of that, I overcorrect it sometimes, and then it actually manages to do what I want it to do, but in too much of a regard. So uh, yeah, it's a bit of a shame that yeah, it wasn't as controllable as you would have liked. Well, I would have liked, and uh, yeah, as a result, slightly slower, but still a good uh, showing from Nissan, especially for their first car. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what maybe uh, older Nissan GT GTRs can do because they are even lighter than this, uh, as well as also having all-wheel drive standard. So yeah, be interested to see what they can do in comparison to this, as well as other vehicles on this series. Nonetheless, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!